In this video, we're going to be um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. So we can actually do operations with entire functions. Uh, real quick, let's just review functions. Uh, function names look something like this, where f is the name. And this other letter inside the parentheses is usually describing the input. So the function f is defined by whatever you put into it. Um, so we say f of x, or function f given x. Um, and this, this name, this letter right here, could change. It could be any letter in the alphabet. Um, but the ones you'll see the most are definitely f and g, and after that they usually go to h. Um, but usually the input is always x. If we think about our xy table, which we will definitely practice a lot more of in the next few videos, uh, x is always the input, so using x as your input for our function names is a good letter. y is usually our output, right? And for the sake of functions, the entire thing, or this entire name, um, is the output. So we define our functions by the inputs, and we get the outputs out. Uh, so again, we'll be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, just our basic operations of math, using entire functions. So let's define a, a function. Get rid of this. And again, we'll just use f of x. And again, we're thinking that that's y. That's our output. Given an input. Um, and we're going to define our function as 2 times our input, or 2 times a number, or 2x. We're going to define a different function. We're going to call that one g. And we're going to say that g is defined by adding 1 to an input, or x plus 1. If I want to add these two functions together, you may see notation that looks like this. which means to add these two expressions, or combine these two expressions, combine all the like terms, and simplify. Um, but sometimes you may also see this written slightly differently. Now because both of these names have x in them, what they like to do is they like to factor it out and rewrite it looking like this. f plus g and factor out the x. It still means the same thing. It still means add the two functions, f and g, based on the inputs. So, just substitute. Just like substituting a variable, now we're substituting an entire expression. So 2x instead of f of x, and instead of g of x, we say x plus 1. It's always nice to use your parentheses in this case. Um, not so much for addition, um, but definitely when we get to subtraction, it'll make a difference. So we just combine our like terms. We have 2x's and 1x, and that gives us 3x's, and we still have a plus 1 at the end. So this is the sum, or what happens when I add those two functions. All right, let's do another example. If I want to subtract those two functions, Again, same definitions. And now I want to subtract them, so you may see it looking like this. Oops. G of x here. Or you may see it written with that x factored out. Still means the same thing, just subtract these two expressions. This is where your parentheses definitely matter. So 
we'll say 2x instead of f of x minus x plus 1. So we're subtracting this whole expression. When we end up doing things like that, we need to distribute our negative sign to everything in that expression. So it ends up being 2x minus x minus 1. And when we combine our like terms, 2x minus 1x gives us 1x, or just x, and we still have the minus 1 there. So that's our final difference of our two functions. Um, I'm going to try, yeah, let's just rewrite it. Let's try multiplying our two functions. Same function definitions. And again, you may see it written like this. Or. Just like that. It means the same thing. It means multiply these two expressions together. So we got 2x. And we're going to multiply that all the way through x plus 1. So we're going to distribute. So 2x times x, that gives us 2x squared. And 2x times 1 just gives us positive 2x. So this is the product of our two functions. Let's do one more here. Using the same functions. happens when we divide. Well in this case um, we don't necessarily divide our polynomials or our expressions. We substitute first. So f of x on top, 2x on top, and g of x on the bottom or x plus 1. Um, so if you know your polynomial uh, division you could do that but in most cases, what they want you to do is just define your domain. They want to know um, what are possible values of x that will give us a real solution. So not an imaginary one and not an undefined one. Um, and in most cases, when you come up with a domain, you come up with values that x cannot be. So what is a value of x? that would make this whole um, quotient here be undefined. So if you think that if the denominator is 0, then that would make this fraction undefined. And the only way to make the bottom 0 is by adding negative 1. Um, so we just, here's our domain. And the shorthand for that is usually just a capital D. And we use these little squiggly notations here. But mostly we say what x can't be. So we say an equal sign with a cross through it. That means it can't equal. So x can't equal negative 1. And this would be our domain um, notation. And we're just defining the constraints of this equation. What what values we can't have. And so for the most part, we can't have negative 1. Um, but we'll get it into domains in more depth a little later on. I just wanted to touch on that, give you a little introduction there. And uh, for the most part, it only comes into play when we're dealing with quotients because we never want the bottom of our fraction to ever be 0. And so we usually list values that um, our input can't be when we define our functions here. All right, let's talk about something else here. <clears throat> Along the same concept, we have these things called power functions. And it's a function. And you're probably thinking, well, it has a power if it's called a power function. And you're right. Power function looks like this. It's a function, so we give it a name. And we define it as really just a number with an exponent. And that variable can have a coefficient um, 
and this variable can have a power. So this is called a power function. This is the generic little function outline here. What your power functions will normally look like. So let's do a little bit of um, operations here with power functions. And this is where our, um, our practice with powers and exponents and radicals all come together here. So if we define f of x like that, and we define another function g of x as something like this, we can do math with these functions. Let's do the sum. We're going to add them up. I'll leave the notation up to you, and I'll just combine these two functions here. We have 2x to the 1 half plus negative 6x to the 1 half. Um, so if you remember, how do we add and subtract? Really, radicals is what these are. And if you want to visualize it a slightly different way, it's the square root of x. And since we're adding a negative, that's the same as subtraction. So I can change that to subtraction. So just changing the form here. Remember that an exponent of a half is the same as the square root. So now we can talk about it a little bit better here. In order to add or subtract, we always want the same radicand. That's the number underneath the radical. And so we have the same radicand. We also want the same index. Um, and that number that's right there above the radical there which is implied that it's 2 for square roots. But you start to see the number when you increase your roots, like third roots and fourth roots. You'll start to see the number. For square roots, it's just implied. So as long as we have the same index and we have the same radicand, we can combine the coefficients, the numbers in front. So we say 2 minus 6 at the front, and we get negative 4. And square root of x, we keep that the same. That's just a term. We could also rewrite it back in its original form using powers and make it look like that. Either form, both are acceptable. Let's do more, more operations with these same, same functions here. And just keep going until we run out of time. Let's try and do the difference of these two functions. So the difference of these two functions, 2x to the 1 half minus negative 6x to the 1 half. And when we do that, again, our parentheses matter here, because now we have a double negative. So really what we're doing is we're going back to the sum, but now we're adding a positive 6. We'll just jump ahead here. We add our coefficients. 2 plus 6 is 8. And we keep our term the same, x to the 1 half. So that's our final answer for the difference of the two functions there. Let's do a product. Let's multiply these two things and see what happens. So when we do that, we multiply the coefficients. And we get negative 12. And when we're multiplying bases that have exponents, as long as they have the same base, we can combine the exponents, and we end up adding the exponents. So just make sure that they have the same denominator. And when we end up adding it, we get 2 over 2, which reduces to 1. So eventually we just get negative 12x to the first, or negative 12x. And that's about all the time we have. So again, just basic functions. Um, and the new thing we saw was power functions. So functions defined with powers, exponents. Um, and uh, basic operations we can do with functions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So good luck practicing your operations with two functions.